Hey gang, what's up? Welcome back here to another edition of Intuitive Angling and much appreciated you guys uh, spend a little bit of time with me today for the video. And got a good one today. We're gonna, this is gonna be one of the educational videos. It's not gonna be any uh, quick fixed uh, instant gratification lure tip or anything like that. We're gonna be talking about uh, behavior and movements in March bass. You know, what the fish do. I'm gonna sort of break down what happens in the month of March. And um, I think if you take some time to listen to the video, it'll really, uh, help you in the long term uh, be able to just find more fish. It's going to be some uh, really good info I think you guys will really enjoy. And I just want to thank everybody uh, once again, everybody that's been been, been participating uh, in our view product shopping tab. Um, when you click on the video at the bottom, you'll see a little screen pop up that says view products. And there's 30 products I put on there every day that I think you guys might be interested in. There's not a better way to support the channel guys by just looking at those products, checking them out, clicking on the products. A uh, good way to help out here. Much appreciated. Okay, guys, we're going to get into this. This is, uh, once again here, um, every time I do videos on the more abstract things about bass fishing, uh, very few, only the serious hoggers watch it. Most people know it. They, they thumb on through looking for the best color plastic worm or something. But what I want to do today, guys, I want to talk about the month of March. And I sort of want to dive deep a little bit into what fish do during the month of March. Um, and uh, we'll... I think it's going to be sort of eye-opening a little bit. Now, first of all, one of the difficult things about doing these YouTube channels and talking about seasonal patterns and movements is we've got our country is big and it's got a lot of different geographical regions and the fish do different things at different times based upon the position of your lake geographically. Now, the fish in the southern tier states obviously are, are going to be different than the ones in the northern tier or the middle so for the most part, I'm, I'm going to try to throw out some bones that will sort of encompass everything out there um, and give something a little bit for everybody. Um, I think one of the important things to remember about March is March, in my opinion, it's the most, it's the most complex month of the year in terms of um, bass movement and behavior about what the fish are doing because the bass sort of go from being in their winter, winter patterns into actually spawning a lot of times in one month right there based upon weather patterns. Now, one of the things you're going to find out about bass fishing when you talk about it on a month by month basis is weather patterns influence um, the stage that fish are in tremendously. And, and weather patterns are not climate. That's the big, di that's the big difference with it because weather patterns can uh, be something that just change year to year based upon different frontal systems that come in. For example, here in Missouri, you know, we've had a really wet uh, late February and March, and our lakes are all higher than normal. I mean, normally we don't have water levels this high here, like Table Rock Lake has been above normal, uh, you know, for the last several weeks. Uh, that's not normal. And then sometimes you'll have a period of not much rain, and they'll be low. And sometimes the water temperature is a little warmer, sometimes they're a little cooler. So um, that's one of the things you sort of have to take in consideration. But anyway, what I want to get into here is I really want to talk about the three seasons within the month of March. Now we've discussed this a little bit in the past, but I want to dive into it a little bit deeper here because March is one of those months where you can have bass in the pre-spawn, actually spawning, and in the post-spawn all in the same month, April to some extent as well, based upon where you're at. But for the most part, bass are sort of in that pre-spawn stage and different very different levels of the pre-spawn so what you're what you're looking at here is, is if you live in an area where your water temperatures in march are still in the upper 40s and low 50s which you know is pretty common from like my part of the country to up just a little bit north of here you're going to have the bass sort of in their late winter early pre-spawn patterns and normally what this signals it sort of signals um the bass beginning to move out of deeper water or a percentage of the bass beginning to move out of the deeper water and sort of filtering up into the shallower water. Now, when they filter up into the shallow water, you know, they can, some of them use the bottom, some of them suspend, uh, but in general, they just use shallower water. For example, in the summertime, or excuse me, in the wintertime, we may have bass like here in my part of the country that suspend 40 foot deep over 80 foot of water, whereas in March, those same fish may suspend, but they move up and they maybe suspend five or 10 foot down over 15 or 20 foot of water. 
And some of the bass in the wintertime may be on the bottom in 30 foot of water or 40 foot of water. And now they're on the bottom in three to six foot of water. So they just start moving a little bit shallower in the pre-spawn. And normally what you have is you have the bigger fish begin to move up shallower quicker. That's why we've talked about this before. March is such a really good time to catch uh, big fish because the bigger there, there's more big fish up shallow in March and early April than any other time of the year. Now, the second phase that happens in March is the what I call the sort of like the uh, um, the, the the mid to late pre spawn. Now, this is a period where the fish are starting to move into different type of bank angles, and they don't suspend as much. So. One of the things you'll find out about bass in cold water or cold weather is they tend to like vertical structures more, it, whether it be suspending or they like bluffy banks or steep banks, channel banks, that type of stuff. As you get more into the mid to the late part of the pre-spawn, this is usually signaled by water temperature sort of in the mid 50s in that range, mid to maybe, maybe at the maximum of like 57, 58 degrees the bass start to filter out to a little bit flatter areas for the most part. Now this can be this can be flats, like if you're fishing Sam Rayburn, it can be a shallow grass flat off of an adjacent creek channel. You know, if you're fishing someplace, a man-made impoundment, it can be the fish moving from like a channel bank onto, uh, you know, a flatter bank going into a cove, but they just tend to seek more flatter areas, more horizontal type structures and they tend not to suspend as much. They tend to move up shallower and they're on the bottom. Now this is a really good time to catch them because when the fish are positioned like this, um, you, there's a lot of different ways you can catch them. You can catch them on big swim baits, you can catch them on crank baits, spinner baits, chatter baits, pitching and flipping around shallow cover. A lot of it just depends on the water clarity and the water level that you're fishing. And then what you have is that water temperature starts knocking on 60 degrees, which, a lot of the parts of the country here, you know, by the end of March, by the very end of March, there's a lot of places around the country that have water temperatures close to 60, 58 to 60 degrees. That is when those fish are really, really getting close to spawning. And if you've got bass, if you've got some species like smallmouth bass, they're going to spawn a little earlier. But what you're going to have is that water temperature starts to get in the upper 50s where it's in the upper 50s right off the bat first thing in the morning, that's when those big fish will start spawning. Those big fish will move up first to start to spawn. Um, and then the smaller ones will move up, you know, as the water temperature goes up a little bit more in April. But so what you've got in, in a lot of different lakes is you went from a late winter pattern, you know, like now or a couple weeks ago up to the actual spawn by the end of March. So you sort of like when you're trying to determine what phase they're in, because every lake that one thing that is unique or one thing that is a common thread amongst all the lakes in the country is every lake has those three distinct seasons in March. You've got the pre-spawn, spawn, spawn or the early pre-spawn, mid pre-spawn, and the actual close to the spawn in the same month. All of that stuff is going to be determined by things again like weather patterns, water clarity, water level, uh, moon phases. Um, just various environmental conditions. You have current, current flows, all that type of stuff. So the main thing that you have to do is pay attention, guys, to your water temperature first thing in the morning. You don't, one of the biggest um, things that'll throw you into a loop and, and sort of like lead you in the wrong direction is if you try to, if you try to, to formula, formulate a game plan around water temperatures in the afternoon, because a lot of times, that's a fake reading because what happens is, say you get an afternoon where the sun's been beaten down on the back of a cove and shoot, the water could be 10 degrees warmer than the main lake, but those fish do not react that quick most of the time to that abrupt rise in water temperature. What you're looking for is you're looking for those water temperatures, how they are right off the bat first thing in the morning, because that is sort of the real water temperature and that will, that will gauge you where you need to begin your search at. So, in a nutshell, guys, one of the things to remember in March fishing, early March, there's still a lot of fish deep, deep suspended. They're they're targeting more vertical structures, steeper banks. In mid-March, when that water's in the mid-50s, they're starting to move to those flatter banks. They don't suspend as much. And by the end of March, they're really, really keying in on and, you know, looking for areas to build nests in, moving shallow, moving more towards the back of the coves. And that's just sort of the uh, the the ritualistic cycle that they've been in ever since we've had man-made lakes. So 
Anyway, I hope that gives sort of gives you guys a foundation. We'll tap into that stuff more. There's a lot to be talked about on that. That's just sort of a brief description of how it works. So hope it helps you guys out. We'll talk later.